Yes. Uh, can you say your name? 
My name is Timothy Miss Timmon. Uh, my address is uh, 24, 24 Richard Street. Can you turn off your stream in the background? That better. I'm not sure if my audio is going or if I can speak. I don't, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm not getting any audio on my end. I'm not sure if um, so I can speak. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'll repeat. My name is again uh, Timothy Miskimmon. I reside at 24 Richard Street. Um, I wanted to, to speak uh, about a concern that I've I've actually been having for the last few years in regards to common assessments. Uh, at Copeland Middle School. I, I have spoken to both building administration and central administration about these concerns, um, you know, over the last few years. Um, in general, the concerns that I've had in the past were, you know, there were discrepancies in regards to how the assessments were advertised and then how they were actually implemented. Some of the tests didn't necessarily kind of match what the um, building administration was advertising them, you know, as, 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 they, as they were. I also had expressed concerns about the limited window of time that students were given, um, you know, to prepare for set assessments. Um, oftentimes they were right at the end of the marking period, last major test grade before their grades are finalized. And some of the tests certainly, you know, are not the kind of low stress, no need to study types of tests that they, uh, that they are advertised as. Oftentimes they do require preparation and also sometimes might require, you know, the students having the ability to ask for extra help. And when they're given a small window of time, obviously it's hard for uh, a student to be able to accomplish that. Uh, so as I said, I, I've spoken to the assistant superintendent about this a little over a year ago. Um, you know, he, he had indicated that he would certainly kind of speak with uh, building administration to kind of address it. Granted, that was obviously right before the pandemic. So I know other things became, um, you know, priorities. But this year I've had some, you know, I, I, you know great concerns because I think that the problems, uh, not only have they not gone away, but now they seem to be worse. Uh, in the previous years, as parents, we were able to see when exactly common assessments were going to occur. We could see them on the school calendar on the website at the start of the school year. Uh, this year, they were not there. I can tell you that myself and many other parents that I've spoken to at the start of the school year, we, we actually thought that they weren't going to happen simply because of the nature of this school year. Um, 
came as a bit of a surprise, you know, when the first round of common assessments kind of were rolled out, students were told once again about a week out that they were going to take these assessments and were then given review materials to prepare for them. So it kind of came out of the blue for us as parents. Didn't necessarily affect the students that much because the first round ended up getting postponed due to a COVID shutdown at, at Copeland. But then again, we're waiting for the second round. Uh, you know, we're waiting for notification of when they're going to be. We get to the end of the second marking period, no word. And then all of a sudden, middle of the third marking period, this time for some of my daughter's classes, less than a week out, she's notified that she's going to take a common assessment and it's given review materials. Um, I've expressed, I spoke to the assistant superintendent two and a half weeks ago about this. I find it highly inappropriate. I'm in education myself. I've been teaching for 22 years. I teach advanced placement juniors at the high school level. I would never do this to them. I don't see how the district finds it appropriate to do that to sixth, seventh and eighth graders. So the questions that I guess that I have in regards to this issue, now question number one, what is the district planning to do to hopefully change at least for this upcoming final round of common assessments so that families actually know when they're going to take place. And also, you know, for those tests that certainly do require an adequate window of time to prepare and an adequate window of time for students to be able to ask for help. Uh, what is the district going to do to guarantee that at least for this final round of tests, they're not given less than a week window to prepare. Also, what is the district gonna do for the future? You know, I've got a son who's gonna be starting Copeland next year. Um, is there a plan? You know, I know the district did a really great job in looking at K to five and revising the grading profile and, and assessments there. Uh, does the district have plans for doing the same thing for grades six through eight? My second question, if the district is planning to make changes, if they're acknowledging that, that, the, that what happened in the second round really, really wasn't appropriate, is there a plan to take a look at the impact that this second round of assessments had on kids and their, and their grades? Is there going to be any type of data analysis to determine if these tests, which in some cases the students found out less than a week before they took them, if it hurt their grade? And if it did, is there going to be anything done before the grades get finalized at the end of the marking period to take those grades away? Because they're not authentic. Um, so those are my questions. Um, I, I, I've come here. I just wanted to let you know this is, this is not my first effort to try to talk to people in the district about this issue. This is three years of me trying to reach out and I haven't seen change. So I've made the decision to come to the board meeting and to speak publicly and to ask these questions in public so that then the answers can be on the public record. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Lipsky, we're going to close the session and we'll respond outside of outside of open public comment. We were having some difficulty with the um, audio. Okay. Thank you. Hear me? I have a motion, please close the public comment. Uh, uh, so moment, please. Okay. Is it an hour? Do we have everyone? I want to thank Mr. Skimmon for. Uh, 
time tonight. It was good to uh, go to the case with uh, the voice. And I thought, as you said, uh, quite a bit. Um, so, in response to some of the points that you made, we definitely took everything you said under advisement. And some of the, the key things that we'd like to do and like to promise to the community are uh, better for these communities about timing the assessments going forward. Uh, meaning that uh, you mentioned uh, adequate notice time, and that's definitely something that we will look forward to doing. Including putting those dates on back on the school calendar. Um, as we've discussed before, some of the dates uh, were not put on the school calendar because of the, the COVID this year. Um, we do recognize that. Put them on the school calendar to give uh, parents and community and students a definite time frame to, to expect those assessments. Um, and then to address some of the other points you made, which I think was a great question about the, the way that we're looking at assessment going forward. It is definitely in our plan. I think you'll see that as a theme tonight that uh, we are looking at uh, the data across the board and we're using it to drive the decisions that we make. And so I think you'll see it when we move forward a uh, much clearer picture going forward to day eight uh, with, our, with our data project. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next on our agenda communications. Uh, I checked the board mail earlier today and I saw nothing. Um, no, I just told them. Thank you. Um, next is to approve our minutes from the March 3rd meeting last month. So, can I have a motion, please, to approve the minutes? So little Second. Thank you. Can I please have a roll call, Mrs. Cabrillo? Yes. Mrs. Cabrillo? Yes. 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 Okay. Next on our agenda, we have our superintendent's report, and he's planning on starting with speaking about the strategic plan goals presentation. And you just have the table. Thank you, my board. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Rockaway Township. In just a moment, we're going to have a presentation pulled up. And as a bit of context, um, dating back to pre pandemic times, we had launched a very robust strategic planning process that we then uh, fast forward to the summer of last year in preparation for this coming school year when we adopted the strategic plan. And at that time, I made a commitment that I wanted to make sure. At least three times every school year, I came in front of the community to provide updates about our strategic plan. Um, and so, to ensure that, really, with any high quality strategic plan, it has to be a living document. And so, alongside the strategic plan on our website, I created two additional documents. One you see here in front of you tonight is called the Plan on a Page. It's basically a one pager that gives you a quick overview of some of our key projects and priorities. That have been guiding our work these last few months. And the second I'll get to in just a moment, which is a five page document. Let me pause though and just say a few words about the context of the past year. We've come up now in a year since the pandemic hit our community. And the reason I felt it was important to continue to go through with our strategic planning process was that we know at some point this pandemic will come to an end. And it's important that we continue to make investments, strategic investments. Our entire school system to ensure that upon conclusion of the pandemic, we're able to continue to move forward. And so let me jump in um, and orient into the document you're looking at right now. You'll see those three circles, those three buckets academic success, supportive culture, facilities, and security. In designing our strategic plan, we identified these three key areas where we want to be able to articulate to the community on a regular basis what we're doing to move these areas forward. In detail. And so under each of those buckets, you're going to see three categories. One, planning phase, second, in progress, and the third, complete. And what I'm trying to do there is to show the community at a high level what projects are in the planning phase. They haven't yet launched yet, they're on our radar, and there's something we're looking forward to moving, moving on in the next three to six months. In progress, I'm trying to articulate the community work we're currently engaged in have been engaged in for a period of time and may be engaged in for another six months to 12 months. And then the complete area is where we're trying to identify areas where we've achieved. Uh, we set out as a priority and we feel that we've implemented them 
uh, these, pro these programs or projects with success. What I've tried to do, rather than speak to all the bullets, I've highlighted the key bullets here, which are either new uh, for the first time to this document, or they moved along the document in some way. The reason, again, I think it's important to, to highlight in this matter is I think it highlights the importance of this docu document and this overall strategic plan being a living document. So let me jump in. Under academic success, I've highlighted in the planning phase co-teaching and preparing to launch a co-teaching model at Birchwood this September. Now that is exciting to share and you to share because as part of the PCG audit that we conducted for our special education programs almost a year ago, came to conclusion right before the pandemic hit, we identified one of the recommendations in that report was to grow co-teaching models across our district. And so through our plan over the last several months, we're prepared to commit that we're prepared to launch a two-year co-teaching program at first with this September. Alongside that, another opportunity presented itself. For some time, we realized that our preschool services that we've offered at TVO were in need of additional space and an expansion, an opportunity to expand our preschool services across our district was something we saw as a great win. And so I'm pleased to say that over the planning of the last three months, we've identified space at Birchwood where as we launch a co-teaching model, we're also going to be prepared to expand our preschool, pre preschool services at Birchwood to include both an AM and PM class in September, as well as full day services. Um, similar to how we offer our services at DBO now, uh, but in doing so, we will be moving some of the services out of DBO to relieve some of the space needs, and at the same time launching new services at pre-K. You may be asking yourself, what is that 1.5.C reference in parentheses there? The reason that's important is that you can use that uh, reference point to go right back to the full strategic plan. Of all of the updates I'm going to share with you tonight, the idea that we're launching a pre-K expansion at Birchwood is the only update that is new. And the reason I share, say that to you tonight is because it demonstrates to me that the priorities we identified early on in the strategic planning process continue to resonate not only with the community, not only with our teachers and our readers, but across the entire strategic planning process. So I want to make sure you could tie that specific project of pre-K expansion back to the overall plan. Moving along down the line there in progress, just going to highlight a couple more pieces. One, two, two bullets that relate to the presentation tonight. We've committed since day one of the strategic planning process, the idea of launching universal screening three times per year. Tonight, I'm going to provide one of our first updates about that. And then second, from last, the bullet there speaks to systems for data informed practices. The information I'm going to share tonight is an important step forward for creating that data informed practices across our district. And so that's been, that's on the horizon for my presentation this evening. And then lastly, I did want to highlight how the response to our audit of special education services has moved. That bullet was in the planning phase, but we made some progress in some key areas, and that's why you moved that down to in progress. Moving across the page to supportive culture, under the planning phase, you'll see, and this actually ties into our last board meeting, where we had a presentation from our partner related to restorative practices. One of the key projects we're looking to work towards completing by the end of next school year is ensuring that the Copeland Middle School Code of Conduct is rewritten to align with the value of restorative practices. And then second, are also, it's now entering into the planning phase, the idea that we want to do more to expand our partnerships within the community and have broader communication across the community beyond just our stakeholders and our families. But the entire world, the entire community in general. And then in progress, the highlight for you community forums. Pre pandemic times, the vision for this work was clearly to have in person, ongoing community forums. I regret that the conditions of the pandemic have prevented that. However, as you will find from your emails, um, I have provided regular community updates. Uh, and I know I've got some feedback that the emails have been a bit much at times, but. I think the over communication has been necessary to ensure the safety of all of our community members. Uh, going forward, I will be reaching out to PTA presidents in the coming weeks to see about attending and zooming into PTA meetings in the spring to try to reinitiate this community engagement. And then, lastly, under in progress for supportive culture, 
we won. Uh, we set out a goal uh, to have our district identified and to be rewarded and acknowledged for being a district of character. And thanks to the leadership in our schools and the partnership with our teachers and families, all of our schools have now been acknowledged as either state schools of character or national schools of character. So that was a big, uh, a big achievement that came through this year, and certainly is important to highlight uh, the need and the importance of our social and emotional supports for all of our students. And I'm proud to say that in Rockaway National Schools, we've been recognized for ability to do, perform those services and deliver those services at a high level. And then lastly, under this bucket, uh, what's been completed um, is we did launch a new communication platform. It started uh, this September when we launched our new website, and really just came to completion recently when I transferred my email communications to a different platform, which is not only more user-friendly, but more reliable on our end to ensure that our communication is being received by our fans. Then moving to the final column under facilities and security, some exciting updates. Uh, we're now moving into the planning phase to ensure that the wire receives its electronic marquee during the 21-22 school year. Um, we are in a planning phase still and thinking about uh, launching a new design thinking lab here at Open. And uh, we are very much in the planning phase and preparing to launch this summer uh, the new uh, construction project at TPO to ensure that the HVAC system there is completely refurbished and the window project will soon follow. Um, get at that project for DBO into the into the fall and winter months of or the next upcoming school year. A few items that are in progress: uh, a new door entry system for the district. We do have grant funds dedicated to that. We're just waiting for final approval of our application. And I'm pleased to report that the Birchwood sign was recently approved at the last planning board meeting, and so we're going to quickly move to not only purchase but also install that sign ideally before the end of this school year. And then when the wire sign comes online, all six of our schools will have that um, exciting marquee in front. Uh, and then we continue to be excited about our partnership with the town to ensure that we have class three officers in our schools and to ensure the highest level of safety for our students and staff. We do, full transparency, have one vacancy that we're still looking to fill, uh, but the four officers that continue to remain have been a welcome addition uh, to our school community. And then under completed, uh, one exciting project that we were able to complete in the last few months, and I'd like to thank Principal Governor and Board Member Tomasini for their partnership on this, was we did, uh, we had committed to providing additional protocols for our class three officers. And so those were not only created, but we also conducted the training session on all of them. So the next document I'd like to uh, preview with you, I'm not gonna talk through all of these details tonight. Please know all of these details are on our website and they're already posted. This is what I refer to you as a five page. It goes between the one page I just showed you and the 15 page strategic planning process. And what it includes on the right hand side is it basically talks about a measurement of, of potential three categories. One is saying whether that specific objective is on track, in progress, or off track. And under the first, uh, first goal area of academic success and agility, there are six total objectives. And if you peruse through that, you'll get some more insight into what we would consider to be an on-track uh, objective and in progress or an off-track. To say it a little differently, I would say it's on-track, it's in the fast lane, it's moving forward. Um, if it's in progress, we've slowed down for a, variety of, for a variety of reasons, but we're still making progress. If it's off-track, we pulled off the side of the road. We have to you know, re-examine where we are uh, with that. So of these six objectives, I'm pleased to say objective one is now back on track. That's why that's in green. When I last did this report to start the school year, this was in progress, mostly because we had paused launching our FNP and Vanel benchmark assessments due to the pandemic conditions. Um, this has been uh, one of the key elements of our balanced literacy program in elementary school. And going back almost two years now, we've been providing job embedded professional development to our elementary school teachers towards the goal of being able to train them on the FNP. And right when the pandemic hit a year ago, it, put a, it stopped us in our tracks. The reason the FNP benchmark assessment is so critical is because the deeper understanding our teachers get of those running records, those assessments, has a direct, direct impact in positive ways on their instruction for our students on specific levels. And this was not on track to start the school. 
Uh, we relied on a different assessment, basket online assessment to get this leveling. Uh, but we now have plans to not only continue the professional development board, but to ensure that by the third round of assessments of this school year, all of our students in the elementary schools will receive the traditional FNP assessment. So we're excited about that. And then the classroom libraries. Um, our teachers had an allowance of $400 in elementary schools to purchase our classroom libraries. I'm very excited to see how many purchase orders I'm improving over the last few weeks to ensure that we are and truly investing in our classroom libraries at the elementary schools right now. I'm going to go to the next page. There we go. These are the other objectives under goal area number one. Um, the only the, the areas that are highlighted in green relate to what I've already talked about, and that is the preschool expansion uh, at Birchwood. The other uh, dash you'll see there under objective five is that we have posted an anticipated opportunity to bring a special education supervisor onto our team that, that we're excited about uh, in lines with the recommendations in the PCP report and provides us with some additional support and professional development for our special education teachers and also will give us the, the ability uh, to not only give them more professional development support but also make some more strategic investments in curricular resources in our resource rooms across the district. So um, super excited about that investment uh, into the 21-22 school year. Moving along, uh, goal area number two talks about safe and supportive cultures. Um, some specific updates here. I've already referred to objective one, talks about our work of character education and our success in that place. Under objective number two, we do seek to, in the coming months, expand uh, our communication strategy with uh, one partner and one curricular resource that we currently have in our district. The partner is uh, Rockaway Township Substance Abuse Alliance. We're excited to begin to not only plan for the Career Day and the Heroes Day, but also talk in other way, exciting ways about uh, the values that alliance brings to our community. And the other is our LEAD program. Uh, going back two years now, uh, we adopted the LEAD program, which really expanded our substance abuse curriculum from just fifth grade all the way through fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, and then an eighth grade partnering with the Substance Abuse Alliance. We set out as a goal over the next couple of months to expand our communication about this work throughout the community, which demonstrates to our students and our families how we're teaching our students to make smart and healthy decisions around some of these important areas. Moving along to the next page, these are the other objectives under goal area number two. Um, prior to my prior update, objective five is off track. I've upgraded it's in progress. Uh, it's still not on track, but we made some progress with professional development we helped for our school leaders uh, to begin planting some seeds for what additional service learning projects could look like uh, when we do return to more normal times. So that's uh, why I, that was the rationale I used for moving that to in progress. And then I've already spoken to you under objective six. Um, we've launched the PTA Council, and I'm eager to begin meeting more with the PTAs uh, in the spring months after our spring break. And then moving lastly to goal area number three, this is just a one page per year, there's three objectives under this area. I think I've spoken about most of them already on the one page. Um, so again, just for your reference point. I'm now going to pivot. And I referenced early on how for at least two years, one of our key strategies for ensuring that our students are achieving at the highest levels um, across our district was that we were committed to launching universal screening. The pandemic certainly threw a wrench into that process. However, I felt it was important that we still move forward. And what I mean by that is not only with providing assessments to the, our students, but doing what I'm about to do tonight. And that's holding us accountable and sharing this data in an honest and transparent way with our entire community. And that's sharing the good and the bad. Um, it's important for us to develop and to ensure that we have data-driven cultures across our district, that we have regular ongoing conversations about assessment, even when the assessments are messy. And some of the assessment data I will share with you tonight is messy. I'll share with you rationales for why it's messy, uh, but not excuses. And I will also pivot and share with you what our plans are for cleaning up the areas where we are, feel we can do better. So let me jump in. The first part of this presentation will talk about ELA performance, and the second part will be math. One last caveat before I move forward. Prior 
to this and across really the state of New Jersey, the data we look to um, to the, determine whether or not a student's on track or off track was the NJSLA data. We do not have that this year. We don't have it from last year, and it's still unknown whether we we'll even have those assessments this year. And so the assessment data that we use are more informal assessments that we launched this year. And, um, and so that's what I'm about to, to preview for you all. So let me jump right in. For English language arts, we had essentially three slash four different tools. In K to two, we use the cadence, the definition for it you see here, essentially is something that's really going to give us insight into our students' development, phonemic awareness and development, some key, key critical school skills for our kindergartens through second grade. Second, it's the Von Simpanel, that's already spoken about recently tonight. Um, but you also see there RAS kids in parentheses. That's where it's message, to be candid. Um, we did not begin the year with Ross and Pinnell because we hadn't provided our teachers with the media professional development. RAS kids gave us an online platform where our students could be tested, video recorded, and then we would use a correlation chart to get their F and P level. Fast forward to the data I'm about to share with you tonight. What we did for the second round of universal screening is we said to our elementary teachers, at least 20% of your students should be assessed with the traditional FNP because they were still using it. And the rest of the students you could use the RAS kids for. And that is embedded in the data you'll see tonight. Going forward, as I've already previewed, into the spring, the expectation is and will be that 100% of our elementary school students, our elementary school students will receive the traditional FNP assessment. And then lastly, you see the IXL. The IXL was an assessment that was already a year ago one. We chose to expand it and start the school year because we knew we'd have a need for more data. We knew it was an imperfect tool. But we also didn't want to introduce something new at that time. We felt that during this pandemic, we had to be careful about change management for our teachers and adding just throwing new things on. We had to be careful about what we chose to do. Um, and so the IXL is something we do not intend to continue. But because your students experienced it, because we have that data, I think it's important for us to be transparent with you all about it. Let me jump in. I'm going to go through grade level now. I'm not going to spend five or ten minutes on each slide. So for those of you who are already wondering, I may end. I will pick up the pace. But there is some important information here. And I'll also preface this will all be on our website tomorrow. To your right, under the blue screen, my right, your left, potentially, uh, you see the Acadian state. And really what you want to see here is more students moving to tier one um, from fall to winter. Um, that's the idea. Under the F and P area, you see you want to see the same thing. From fall to winter on those upper roads, you want to see more of our students moving to exceeding expectations or meeting expectations. And then if you go to the two blocks below that, you kind of get a sense of that where the trends are. So for our F and P trends in the kindergarten, you can see almost at a two to one rate. Move, more students move up a level than move down a level. Generally a positive trend. But if you go over to the Acadian side, you see a more, more troublesome trend. We've got more students moving down than more students moving up. Helpful information. Um, last thing I should say to just generally to everyone before I move to the next slide. From a specific point of view, the most helpful data point for families wanting to know specifically about their children will be their report card. So all of this information will be shared through report cards and data dashboards for those that are not wondering okay, where, where, where is my child potentially fall in all of the state. We move forward. In first grade, you now see on the honest and Pinnell side there under the green, you see that more positive trend. You have more of those higher numbers and exceeds expectations and meets expectations versus from winter to fall. And then it's also supported in the below uh, chart as well. On the Acadian side, we see a real nice positive trend on our first grade. So you can see that big jump on tier one from 16 to 56%. So we see some nice overall positive trends across our district um, in the first grade on these two data benchmarks. Second grade is one of the worrisome areas as well as fifth grade here. You can see uh, we're not seeing that bump up uh, on the F and P side. We see uh, either stagnation or slight downward trend on the FNP side. On the Acadian side, you're seeing more exciting things happen. Uh, and that's important, especially for our second graders in terms of the 
tier one number and tier two number, tier, number, tier one number going up, tier two numbers going down. For grade three, we're seeing more of a sort of a, a stagnation. People are made, students are maintaining. We're not seeing big jumps or big drops either way. For grade four, similar to grade three, uh, you're seeing slight movements upwards, uh, not dramatic jumps. Given these pandemic conditions, given some of the worrisome nature of the assessments that uh, we had to use this year, um, generally I would consider this to be positive news given this environment. For fifth grade, here we're seeing more of either a downward or flat trend um, across. Uh, that 70% of students in those bottom two areas is obviously worrisome around the FMP side. But we have a third of our students we see meeting and exceeding, two thirds not based on this measurement, which again does have some of us concerned. Moving to grade six, this now goes into the IXL data. So, this IXL data that was demonstrated over uh, this past year um, had some red flags for us uh, in a couple areas. One, there were significant gaps between what the IXL data demonstrated versus what we knew about this cohort of students from their last taking of the NJSLA, where for this cohort, we knew almost 70% of them were either at medium proficient or at an advanced proficient level. This IXL data doesn't align with what we knew then, um, and it causes us concern. We took a deeper look into the overall design of IXL, and there were a couple of things that jumped out of us that there are a reason we're not going to continue with this. One, just the overall administration of the IXL assessment um, gives students the opportunity to skip, test, skip questions. So if you're a virtual student or if you're someone who's potentially not brought into taking this assessment in the middle school, you can easily skip through that without any talent. You also have an opportunity as a student to click an option on any of the questions where you can simply say, I haven't learned that yet. So if you're a student who maybe is not feeling uh, compelled to really work at a question, that's another sort of easy out. Um, that's some of our insight into, again, why the IXL we see a, a bit of a flawed assessment. As I mentioned early on, because we have this data and our students experienced it, we want to be transparent and community about it. Grade 7, we're seeing that same gap between the NJLSA data we knew we had and what we're seeing in the IXL uh, there. It's good to see the no scores go down from fall to winter. And then for grade 8, similar comparison. Uh, and a similar data story. Our goal going forward with our ELA data for the middle school um, and is to switch to the iReady assessment uh, across our district. We're not yet able to make a commitment on the window for that. Uh, the goal is for either this spring or the fall, but within the next couple of weeks, we should be able to make a, a full announcement about when that will be. And so for the last round of assessment data I want to share, is the I ready math data. And you'll see, and even just through the visual sort of uh, compellingness of the way the state is broken down, why we want to also have this type of assessment on our ELA side. And so the data I'm about to show you by grade level has the, is broken down, color coordinated by five different level placements. And you can see the definitions there for you. I won't read them out. Now, overall, across the district, you can see how we perform from the fall to the winter. And what you want to be looking for here are trends. You want more green, less red. Uh, you want shrinking of that yellow. And you can see that. If you look from the left to the right, you can see the green rows, uh, both the green stripe and the green bowl. And that's demonstrating our students growing and moving forward. We go down by grade level now. And again, for those who really want to dive in and digest this, this will be on our website. For tonight's purpose, I just want to give you some general trend data. You can see in the kindergarten there, we see some positive trends. More green, no red, uh, and less yellow. First grade, we're seeing similar trends across the board. Second grade as well. Third grade, similar trends. Fourth grade as well. No surprises in fifth grade, similar trends. 
This is an assessment we use K through eight. So you can see the sixth grade a similar trend as well. Seven, not as pronounced, still positive trend overall. And eight. So there, if you just compare the two different analyses I share with you from ELA to math, when I opened up this part of the presentation, I was transparent and said, it gets a little messy. ELA was a little messy. The math there is a little cleaner. And it's our experience with iReady that really gives us confidence that we want to expand it across the district, K through 8 to ELA as well. A couple other takeaways specific to math. I'm going to pause here for a moment. If we go back and study the historical achievement data for our district over the last five to six years, you would, one of the takeaways you would have is that our math performance was underrepresented, that we were underperforming with math. When I first came to the district, a lot of the anxiety was around our math curriculum, curriculum resources. What can we do to make some improvements in, in that area? And we have made some investments. And based on this analysis here, it appears that our students who were most behind in math are making the most growth right now. Taking a deeper dive into the diagram data, there's cause for optimism that some of the investments we've made and some of the investments we intend to make going forward are having the intended impact to uh, not only reduce behindness, but accelerate student learning. Here's what you can expect from this. By March 23rd, the kindergarten through fifth grade winter dashboards will be uh, run, reviewed by teachers, and uploaded to the parent portal in Genesis. By the end of March, the six through eight winter dashboards will, which with the second common assessment, will not only be run and reviewed, but they will also be uploaded to the dashboards in Genesis. So families can look at the specific information they have alongside the report card about your own personal students achievement. And then as I said in the beginning, um, just in closing, I wanted to highlight right now during these pandemic times, the most important data point for us as a community to look to is that the report card, yes, and the communication, the direct communication that you have with your, with your teacher. They know your child best, and if you have any concerns at all, uh, please reach out and communicate with your child's teacher. Um, with that, I, I know it was a lengthy presentation, uh, but for me tonight was a, a, a first step towards ensuring that our district moves in the direction of creating uh, a culture and climate where we embrace our data, we learn from our data, and more importantly, we have systems of data across all of our grade levels to ensure that we're monitoring our student learning and progress. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna go back to my seat, and now I'm gonna take and welcome questions from our board members. Thank you. Thank you. I'd be remiss not to acknowledge uh, to my left here, Mr. Higgins, um, and several members of the IT department team and our entire teachers, all of our teachers. The reason we were able to even have this data is our teachers' commitment to data entry and conducting these assessments. So the entire community uh, of educators here has been really dedicated to, to getting us to this part. And we're all committed to getting the picture to be even clearer this spring. Yes, there is. Um, and, and another exciting analysis um, that I previewed with Mr. Higgins, but I'll say it now because I'm, I know I'm, we're both excited to be able to provide this in the spring. One of the things we were able to maintain in our schools this year with our reopening plan, by keeping a commitment to the full day schedule, we were able to include and maintain our intervention services. And the reason that's so important is that we're able to launch not only the boost period for intervention, but launch an RTI process in all five elementary schools. And what I'm excited to share with the community come the spring is an analysis of our RTI work. And what I mean by that is 
you know, what number of students have moved from either tier one to tier, from tier two to tier one or tier three to tier two, and to see to what extent are we seeing that movement? Um, and so I thought it would be a little bit much tonight <laughs> uh, to share that as well, but that's on the horizon as well. And was I, did, did I articulate the history lesson there correctly? Like that was pre many, several years ago as in our community, our scores in math were struggling. Struggling, okay. Struggling, and we paid a lot of attention towards the math and knowledge and the struggling. And when I ended up in the eye writing data that we're getting, um, I wrote how it's laid out. Um, something that I noticed that when you're at the middle school, you weren't tracking and you continue to sit there, like as like in one. Like, there's not as much variation because you're, you're tracking already, so those kids um, are kind of staying where, where they are. Um, and that, that's kind of, they were already figured out where, like, where they are, so that's kind of part of it. So I, mean, I see it's consistent, so I can see that. Correct, yeah, you, we, yeah you're not going to see as much aggressive growth at that point. Correct, yes. Uh, yes, I'm looking forward to seeing the language arts data from the RTI, like how that's progressing. Because um, I think, especially with um, past programs, that really did lead to a deficit in that area. So I'm very interested to see if we've been able to start planning those issues. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go back So if that was interpreted in that manner, it was, that would have been a misspeak on my part. Um, in terms of the tracking piece or how we're um, accelerating uh, the students who are, as you say, the most behind, um, some, a couple of the pieces that are in the budget for next year are increasing investments to increase our RTI services uh, at Cobalt. So our priority going back almost two years now was to get RTI launched and implemented robustly in the elementary schools. Um, and building the RTI services that we are able to offer at Copeland um, is our priority going into next school year. So I don't want to get too far ahead of my ski tips here, but the also another move that we made going into this school year, even during the pandemic times, was we did consolidate some of those math coursework, if you recall, right? Yes. Yeah, because the tracking piece in general was not something that we wanted to expand. Uh, we wanted to ensure we had as heterogeneous and group as classes as possible. And so that is something that launched this year as well. Share that concern. I just want to make one comment. Um, Dr. T, I, I really appreciate the authenticity here. 
recognition should be acknowledged. The, the fact that the, the amount of time that was taken and uh, to put this all together, very much appreciated. You're showing the goods and the bads, yes. uh, everything, all here in one. And I really, really appreciate that. I'm sure the community appreciates it as well. We're showing that we, we're not perfect, right? But uh, step one is acknowledgement, and we're moving forward with that. So thank you, Dr. T and Mr. Higgins, uh, for all the work you put into this. Thank you very kindly. Thank you, Sam. Good evening, everyone. I have just a uh, few announcements to make. And as Dr. T mentioned before, on Monday, the Rockaway Township Planning Board approved our application to study work at the Berkeley School, and we will be installing an LAPD sign in the home. Work continues on the GDL HVAC project. Bids for that project will be received and opened on April 15th. We hope to be able to award a contract at the April 21st meeting. Tonight, the board will be voting to submit the school year 21 22 budget to the county for approval. We will be having a budget presentation for the public on May 5th, 2021, at 7 p.m. here in the Coconut Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brown. Does anyone have any questions for Mrs. Brown? Um, next on the agenda is the curriculum report. Good evening, members of the board, and hello, Rockaway Township. I'd like to start my report by thanking the K 1 virtual teachers, all of the K 1 classroom teachers, and students and families of all who made the shift this week either to full in person learning or full virtual learning. This was a big endeavor and a large leap of faith for all those teachers and all these families. We'd like to thank you for your patience, continued support, and vital feedback on this launch. We look forward to a continued partnership with all parties involved. To launch this, there was a bit of a learning curve from everyone involved, but now we are three days in and we are off and running. Each classroom is working hard to create new connections and Traditionally, school districts offer summer programming aimed at enrichment and exploration for families that would like some structure and opportunity for their children. Here at Rockaway, we have done so for many years. Our programming was aimed at giving students an opportunity to explore new ideas and hobbies. After a year like this one in which student learning took a path that we've never before seen, we are investigating a cost-effective summer program for all families within the district that continues that focus on exploration and enrichment but also takes into account the need for academic remediation. Everyone in the district is working hard to combat funding loss. We would be remiss if we didn't provide opportunities for students to continue their growth over the summer. Stay tuned for a survey that will help us explore the types of options the community may want in a summer program. As Dr. Trenavian said, on Tuesday, March 23rd, we will be opening the parent portal for students in grades K-5 for trimester two report cards and mid-year data dashboards. Should you have any questions regarding the content of these reports, please contact your child's teacher directly. From a global perspective, perspective, I would like to thank the students and teachers for their hard work during January and February in taking these assessments and recording the data. As you saw earlier in Dr. Trenandon's report, understanding where our students are growing and at what rate is crucial to our future plan. Lastly, on February 25th, NJPOE announced that they would be opening a data collection portal for all districts to submit student growth data. The department is attempting to gather data on student growth during the pandemic. They've outlined parameters for districts to submit assessment data that was collected between November 19th and February 19th. Due to our pattern of universal screening assessments in K-5 and common assessments at Copeland Middle School, the district is in a good position to complete this data collection without much trouble. This is a new mandate from the state, and one, and one in which we were not informed about until the announcement came. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. I think you'll have a seat. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Okay, 
next on the agenda we have our Um, I have the Education Committee report. The meeting took place on March 10th um, from 4.05 to 5.32 p.m. Um, located at the board conference room. The attendees were Mr. Higgins, Dr. T, um, Lisa, Aaron, and myself. Uh, the items on today's agenda that were not mentioned in the curriculum and instruction report are the approval of all current curricular course and ancillary materials. The textbook document is still being revised and will be on a future agenda for approval. Second item, German uh, 7 and Germany curricula uh, were not reviewed during the meeting, but they were shared earlier this week, and they are recommended for approval by the administration. The third item, the reassignment of student teachers as per Montclair State University to align with the students' anticipated certifications. The, um, the anticipated new positions that Mrs. DiCarlo mentioned in the last board of that meeting were part of the committee's conversation. The committee discussed the rationale, desired qualifications, and experience for the supervisory special education position, along with the rationales for the Colgan Middle School Reading Specialist, um, Academic Intervention Teacher, and the Middle School Resource Teacher as well. Um, we also had an RTI Handbook Programming Discussion. Um, we discussed the curriculum. The district is planning to create a guide versus the curriculum. Um, ELA and math strategies in grades 6 to 8. Uh, that curriculum is on the revision schedule. Um, a need was identified for a visual RTI in implementation flowchart. This will help, we, uh, help to clearly show parents um, the process for tier one and tier two and tier three. Um, in addition to thanking the students, teachers, and families, I would also like to acknowledge the administration's time, effort, and the creativity needed to provide this opportunity for the K to one students so they can attend more in person. We do definitely appreciate the feedback that families want more students to attend in person. Anyone have any questions or comments? I have um, two. Um, with the German, is the German just a replacement for it, or is it the seventh, seventh and eighth grade? What I'm saying is how they take the two years and then replace their German one in high school, or is it the other one? Okay. That one is it's just for the students who don't want to don't want to go into the high school and return to school. Okay. Well, um, a different type of curriculum. Okay. All right. Less, less dramatic. More cultural. Right. I just wanted to clarify on that one before. Um, and then I'm just like I, I'm sorry I didn't ask this earlier, but um, I, I was looking at this this afternoon, and the idea of the ride versus the curriculum. Can you like ex explain? Why not one or the other? Yeah, so uh, the way that the response to the mentioned works, it's a uh, curriculum seems to be the, the, the strategy. I don't know if that's the most important. I don't know if it's that uh, all students will, will course through. Uh, with a guide, RCI doesn't function that way. RCI for one student will look like this, and for another student, will look a little bit different because it's, it's need based and based on uh, monitoring student progress over time. So we wanted to create a guide that lay out the processes that the RTI, um, the RTI will go through. Um, so a curriculum to me, you know, I would, when I look at language arts curriculum, the math curriculum is based on standards and based on things that every child wants to go through. Um, RTI doesn't work that way. RTI is based on the needs and um, meeting with deficiencies that kids have in their specific areas. So the guide is more like uh, the processes that the district will to ensure that uh, the students' needs are met and also, uh, as I think you were before, uh, how there's a five page view, a one page view, and a 15 page view. And so, what Mrs. Smith was discussing was uh, we, we want to create a visual that kind of can help that, that would uh, describe what the guide from the page packet that we're creating, the visual, one page visual for the cheat sheet. Right? So, that's really what Easy way for parents to understand what the RTI process is rather than they have a multi Okay. So there, there's not going to be a spoken sequence of like what the class and the child is going through with the RTI process, whether they can actually go through? Not one that goes by standards or anything like that. No, it's just what the 
process is because, as I said, certain children may have, may not need X standard and they need Y standard. So creating one document is a difficult for those that need it. Okay, I'll write that one as um, on your own to be able to regarding this uh, site edit. I actually wrote a lot about it, but I probably won't um, go into that tonight. Thank you. Any other questions? Policy So the policy committee, as you'll see, has 12 policies up for the first three, um, 60, 20, 60, 40, 70, 81. Um, one of them is new, all policies are based on legal alerts with some uh, additions or changes made for grammatical like, reasons or to align with our district. Um, the policy committee's next meeting on April 7th at 4.30 virtual. And that's it. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Any other policy? Uh, yeah, the board and the RTEA met for the third joint session on March 11th. Parties discussed proposals and reached tentative agreements on certain language items. Uh, parties are scheduled to meet again on March 25th and March 29th. Okay. Yep. Um, the outreach met last Wednesday for the first time um, at 5 30. The board walked in, myself, Dr. Marion, um, Mr. Bocchini, and Mr. Engler. Um, we just went over a base purpose of the, of the committee. We reviewed the goals and priorities, whether they're immediate or long term, um, what the partnership is looking to do, actually, a, um, a template moving forward for goals and objectives along with the campaign and match that site of our outreach. We will be present in our meeting on the books for April. I believe there were no changes in the <laughs> It's on the report just a date change. We moved the operations committee from uh, March 24th to March 22nd. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Next on our agenda, we have no further um, things for the committee, is our recommendations for board action. So the first um, piece of personnel, I have a motion to approve the superintendent's recommendation for personnel items. So moved. Second. And we have, uh, this is personnel, so we can have discussion. So this is your fellow, I please have a motion. So this is Brooks. Yes. This is Gormoro. Yes. This is Mezek. Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yeah. Mr. Thomas Amy? Yes. Mrs. Elmore? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, can I please have a motion to approve the HIV resolution? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, can I just affirm your recommendation, Dr. Tate, as non-confirmed? That's correct, confirmed. That's not me. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. That's what we need to do. Okay. Before we go on. So we're going to have a roll call on uh, uh, the HIV uh, resolution. Um, and it is not confirmed. Sure. Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Gorlaro? Yes. Mrs. Messick? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? I have seen. So noted. Mr. Tomasini? Yes. Mrs. Elwood? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. There are no current HIV investigations. That is correct. Thank you. Um, next section is education. We have five items on the agenda for education. Can I have a motion to approve education recommendations? So moved. Second. Is there any board discussion? I just love seeing Satan come back to this. That's a fun program, it really is. Yeah. Hello, guys. 
Um, I just have one question. This, this, this is the German curriculum that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. so, okay. yeah. is, there, is there anyone from the public? No? Okay. So if, if there are no further um, discussion, if, there, if there's no further discussion, then I please have a roll call on education items. Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Lauro? Yes. Mrs. Mezek? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Yes. Mr. Tom Finney? Yes. Mr. Selborn? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next, the next agenda item is special education. I have a motion to approve the special education by the So moved. Second. Um, is there any more discussion in this area? We have one item. Okay. Uh, and then we'll be open to the public. So can I please have a roll call on special education? Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Curlado? Yes. Mrs. Magic? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Thompson? Yes. Mrs. Hallborn? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next on the uh, agenda is administration. I have a motion to approve the administration recommendations. So moved. Second. We have uh, one item regarding the school choice. Is there any uh, discussion? Can I please have a roll call um, on the administrative administration items? Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Mrs. Cordillaro? Yes. Mrs. Mezek? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Thomasini? Yes. Mrs. Selborn? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, next is finance. Um, and this is for our budget. Okay. okay. I have a motion to approve the finance recommendation. So moved. Second. This goes all the way through to page 10 and 12 of our budget resolution. Is there any more discussion in this area? Myself and Mrs. Shields signed this afternoon. Okay. Just a clarification of number 11, which is the class three officer. That's an agreement between the township of Rockaway and the Board of Education, correct? Okay. 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 The, uh, the, the, as far as the class three officer, just for clarification for, for everybody when you're listening, the, the agreement, the shared agreement, is between the township of Rockaway and the Rockaway Township Board of Education, correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you for the clarification. When I had watched the last meeting, because I was unable to attend, I did notice there was a discussion about the agenda and the books. Um, and I just wanted to weigh in and as a former educator, I do see tremendous value in you know, teaching the students how we will be providing their assignments in the location, whether it's the agenda book or the assignment list could be somewhere else um, that they're generating themselves as opposed to it being generated for them. So that they learn that skill um, for how to you know, take ownership and responsibility. I know it's the 10th down. <laughs> I duly noted, um, I can update the board. Um, based on the discussion, uh, we have placed it on our, uh, we have a monthly administrative team meeting, and it's on the agenda for the monthly meeting to discuss it. Uh, I'll report back. Um, so, Mr. Brooks, you have a Mrs. Cordillaro? Yes. Mrs. Mezek? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mr. Thomasini? Yes. Mrs. Selborn? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next is policy. Motion to thank you. Have a motion to approve the policy recommendation. So moved. Second. Any board discussion in this area? Um, I have some information that I would like to share um, regarding um, some of the policy items from the last meeting. Um, the two policy items, military leave, that are up for second read, um, were both from the December 2017 alert. Um, according to the alert, revisions were required uh, for the board's uh, payment of the employee's salary while the employee is serving active duty in a branch of the federal or state military. Um, along with changes to the line language applicable to statutes and codes. 
The policy committee added language to carry out the intent of extending the amount of job protected leave time to 180 working days. And the feedback was obtained from multiple places, um, namely school boards, Strauss Academy, the county super, um, including the board attorney, um, as we were aware that we were exceeding the minimum requirements. The vendor had sent back initially the revised version without updating the language as requested. As a result, we ended up using the committee's documents with the corrected language to post on the website for the last meeting. Uh, the vendor's more professional manual version, including the correct language, will be what is uploaded to the policy manual. Um, other recommendations, bylaw uh, 0000.02, the introduction, definition section is up for first read, um, with that minor addition of parents, uh, guardians added, um, and the regulations for the manual update are also up for first read, and as I mentioned previously, military leave um, are now up for second. Yeah. Yeah, Changes were not needed, no. Oh, okay. But I wanted the information from the report oh, okay. just to be shared. And if you haven't already noticed, the district logo was uploaded also to the policy manual by the policy manager. Um, I would like to thank Aaron, Lisa, Christy um, for your time and effort in reviewing manual update items last year and earlier this year. And again, Dr. T for your persistence and dedication. Um, and all the time, uh, you have to finish getting this manual updated. Well, thank you, and you beat me to it. I also wanted to offer my sincere appreciation to the ad hoc committee. Um, uh, Board Member Smith uh, mentioned that the, on the first read tonight also includes the regulation uh, update, and that was a significant um, a lift. And the ad hoc committee, Board Member Mezik, Board Member, member Carlalu, and Board Member Smith uh, were great partners in helping to get that in shape. So I wanted to thank them for that. I also wanted to highlight that across the regulation manual update, we did take uh, great pains to ensure that the language in the man and the regulations was aligned to the policy language from the policy manual update. Um, I also wanted to highlight regulation 2417 uh, did specifically update um, that regulation to align with our RTI programming, which has been such a large part of our meeting tonight. And also just wanted to make sure the community were aware that the update to regulation 1581 domestic violence does provide details for how we as an organization are ensure that we're providing the necessary supports and assistance to any potential victims of domestic violence. And then while I'm not part of this update, um, recently we did upload an regulation 5530 substance abuse, uh, which we had uh, moved on last late fall, early winter. Um, and that details in great length our partnership with the Rockway Township Substance Abuse Alliance. So just wanted to highlight those regulations um, in, uh, in accordance with the manual update being up tonight. Discussion. Can I have a vote on all Mrs. Brooks? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Cordero? Yeah. Mrs. Mezic? Yes. Mrs. Shields? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yeah. Mr. Tomasini? Yes. Mrs. Selborg? Yes. Motion carried. Any polls or resistance? Um, I just want to clarify the policy of the ad hoc committee now. I think that's what we're going We're getting very close. Yes, no, I just want to be sure to do it. Yes, we're gonna we're well, we're gonna note it at the end of the report. Thank you. Thanks the person. Yes, so we look at that feedback and we would uh the first question. Okay, any older business? I have something. I just wanted to thank um Copeland for sending out me to have a virtual art show. All the parents and a shout out to all the talented students slash artists that were included in that. And I uh, just big thank you. It was most enjoyable to look at. I just have a note about the um, start of our four day pre K through one. Um, it 
like to you grow and be healthy and mature and kids just really genuinely so happy to be back. Association would like to recognize a student from each Morristown school district. So I, I forwarded the application to uh, Director Guardian and uh, Mr. Stigella, and both of them said that they were excited to um, send in, uh, to look into this and send out to uh, nominate one of our children to be unsung heroes in their honor, in their honor at um, Women's Day at Home Sun Dinner now. Very much so. We're committed to that, and we also received information about the more traditional leadership Hill School Board uh, this week as well. So, um, yes, we're meeting about tomorrow. Yes, good. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Anyone else? And I just wanted to say thank you to the Pope of PTA and Mr. Ganella um, for that virtual 5K. It was a lot of fun. I ended up doing it the following weekend with my son. I did survive, um, and I did it Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's just medicine. Thank you. Oh, you went viral. That was my idea. That's, I'm not very well versed in selling this, as you can tell. <laughs> it was great. Okay. Um, I just want to verify that there's nobody uh, there in the, um, in the public comment. So um, the next thing to do, because there's nobody there for a comment, um, we need to finish um, one small piece of business um, on their personnel. So we need to uh, return to executive session. We will approximately 30, 30 minutes, and no action will be coming to you. So can I please have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Second. Our show of hands, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Well, you can take the resolution
Second, from Francis, for the viewer that I'm going to be 